Thank you. So um, I'm from Soft Kinetic. Uh, we do uh, 3D time of flight image sensors, 3D cameras that use those image sensors, and software uh, that uh, takes advantage of the 3D data. And that's the uh, point of my presentation today is to talk about why 3D vision technology will bring AR to the masses. Let's face it. Today, AR experiences for the general purpose person are uh, exciting for a very limited set of people and a very limited set of uses. What we have is usually holding a device, looking at an object, an AR uh, situation or experiences presented to that person, but what we really want is Tony Stark. Um, we're still very far from this, uh, this vision, but we're getting there. So my goal today is to talk to you about how 3D vision can help us bridge this chasm and get it into the mass market. Let's first define what 3D vision is. So simply, it's the ability to sense the world in 3D. Uh, that's simply. Now a little more complicated and a little more specifically, it's the ability to capture and analyze enough information to perceive and understand the static or dynamic, rigid and non-rigid objects, and the complete environment in three dimensions. To sense this world in 3D, it requires a device to create a 3D point cloud and software to create that, to process that 3D data and make sense of it. At Soft Kinetic, we create a whole solution that can help with this AR problem. One is we create a 3D image sensor, time of flight image sensor for those of you who don't know our technology. We create 3D cameras that incorporate the 3D depth sensor. And then we produce 3D middleware and algorithms that take advantage of that 3D data and make sense of it. So the first step in acquiring this 3D data is to get the distance to each of the objects in the scene. Now the resulting point cloud doesn't make a whole lot of sense because what you really want is you want to be able to make a relationship between all the points in the cloud, excuse me. So we need to add software that extracts relevant information out of it, out of the 3D point cloud, and to add new objects into the scene. And sensing these 3D objects now, you're gonna be able, you can tell the shapes of objects, people, and rooms. You can also then gauge the scale and the proportions between each of the objects. And then you can sense the movement of rigid and flexible objects. And all three of these are needed to be able to produce the two goals that we see in AR, which is number one, is to provide photorealistic augmented reality interaction, and two, a natural interaction between the user and an AR device. In the software realm, the shape and scale are found by 3D scanning and reconstruction software. This provides coherency between surfaces, sizes of objects, and also the distances between real world objects. Then, by also acquiring that same 3D data at high speed, we can track the movement of objects, such as a human body or human hands. And by understanding all three of these now, shape, scale, and movement, you can bring the photorealistic rendering and natural reaction to be able to control your AR environment. Some examples that are given here in some existing SDKs that you can get off, that you can download and use, some which have now been acquired by Apple. Um, in Mateo on the left, uh, in this scene, we're managing the occlusions in the scene by being able to see that there's a table in front of a chair, the chair is in front of a wall, be able to understand that there are hidden and occlusion, occlusion objects in occlusion, excuse me, and then we can also cast correct shadows by objects in the environment that we either add or are really there. And doing, using the gesture part and the controlling part of an augmented reality scene, as we track hands, in this case on a VR device, and in the picture on the right, we're showing how you can see your hand represented in AR or VR. We track that, those hands and movements, we're able to control the scene, and there's actually a bonus. 
besides just seeing your own hands and your own, your own, what you see through glasses, you can also track other users' hands and bodies and motions to be able to do a more social, collaborative AR or even VR environment. And once your AR system perfectly understands the environment in 3D by using the shape, the motion, movement, you could, the user experience becomes very natural, realistic, and robust, leading to this circle of understanding and then wanting to use it more and more, and people understand the, the mass market of folks understand the benefit for using AR-type environments. Now, where are we today? So today, we have first-generation 3D technology that's becoming integrated into many devices, um, into HMDs and also into other type of devices uh, to provide good quality of 3D data acquisition and the 3D software that's needed to be able to make sense of that, those point clouds. At Soft Kinetic, um, we're part of that first generation in devices that you can now get your hands on today. Um, but there are definite challenges ahead. One is getting from an indoor environment and use case to outdoors. Also to be able to go from small spaces to large spaces in real time. And also to be able to get details on static objects while also tracking very fast moving ones. And as we see with our technology, again, our time of flight image sensor being able to do real time image capture, our time of flight cameras that take advantage of that, and our, time of, and our software that then can make sense of that 3D point cloud. And that's all I have. Are there, are there any questions? Yes? Uh, for your sensor, what is the refresh rate of the depth map? So we get the depth map at anywhere between 30 and 60 frames per second, depending on how fast you clock it. Yes? What is your uh, uh, resolution and accuracy in both range and angle? It depends on the field of view of the lens that you're using uh, for both XY, excuse me, XY density and also um, depth map um, accuracy. Typically, we quote with our standard off-the-shelf cameras, 1% distance is your noise, noise uh, plus or minus sigma, one sigma. So if you're at a meter, you'll get plus or minus one centimeter of your distance measurement. XY, it's a, our standard array right now is a 320 by 240 array. So it depends on what your field of view is, on how that density changes. But each pixel is each pixel in our time of flight image sensor calculates depth independent of the all the others. So it's not a CPU issue. It's just a how many pixels do you want to put on the array issue. Great, and we're in booth twenty-two. Thanks.